Hey you guys, I hope you are having a good day so far. Today I am doing my July favorites. I know we are halfway through August, but it has been a month so far. First of all, did you guys know that a horsefly looks exactly like a really big freaking bee? Um, cause I literally just took a photo of this creature on my window and texted it to my husband and I was like, that is a big bee. As a big bee, and he was like, uh, no, that's a horse fly, and I googled it, and yeah, it's, it's a horse fly, um, and it's still on my window, and, um, did I mention I hate living out closer to the country, and I wish we were closer to a city, because, um, there's a horse fly on my window, I don't do bugs, cute bugs I can deal with, like, Caterpillars, butterflies, the little things. Have you seen these moths? They're like, oh, I can't remember what they're called. I'll have to look them up. I'll like pop a picture up in here somewhere. They're the cutest things ever. And I'm like, please, please. I think they're called like oak mo maple moths, maple tree moths. I think that's it. Oak tree? Oak tree or maple tree? We have a ton of maple trees around here. I've never seen one of these. But like if one of these showed up, I would like invite it to come live in my house if it wanted to. It would be more than welcome because that's freaking adorable. Those kind of bugs I'm totally cool with. Um, slugs, I don't mind. I used to pet banana slugs when we lived out in the middle of the woods in Washington State. That was like forever ago, but yeah, like the typical like farm type bugs, giant horse flies, giant bees, giant things that like to fly around and sting you in general, not a fan. That would be like my unfavorite for the month is big flying things that like to sting you. Um, if I have been absent from social media a lot, I know I've been kind of slow in getting back to replies. I haven't been responding to a bunch of things, not responding, but I haven't been like on a bunch of things lately. I haven't been tweeting as much as I usually do. It's because, um, Basically, to put it really simply, the virtual option my kids' school gave them for the year is absolutely horrific, and the um, curriculum is terrible, and it's about a year behind what they're learning, and it's awful. So I ended up having to pull all four kids out of the public school they were in and put them into one of the state virtual public schools, which is so much better. I've had my kids learn with them before, and they're incredible, really, really excellent curriculum. It's like two years ahead of the basic standard schools. It's really good, however, it is a crazy amount of work for me. So I'm trying to get everything prepped and ready to go right now. The majority of my day is going to be spent teaching them. So I'm going to be kind of filming as much as I possibly can. I may have to film at night. I may have to film on the weekends. Um, I'm going to try and be around as much as possible. I may have to adjust some other things by schedule. Whatever, we're going to make it work. Um, this is not ideal, but with asthma and our family, we have to be extra, extra, extra careful. So hopefully COVID will go far, far away and never come back ever again and we'll get vaccines and everything will get back to normal and it will be safe to send kids back to school, but I personally don't think it's safe right now. I have quite a few teacher friends who are not very happy about going back and the way things are being handled and they don't necessarily think it's safe either. So I am keeping them home for now, which means a big adjustment and we will happily send them back as soon as everything is normal because they love public school. I love public school. I prefer them in public school just because it allows me to get stuff done during the day while knowing that they are taken care of in a nice environment and they are getting a good quality education. But when the, and it wasn't the district that chose this, it was the county. Our county chose this, quite frankly, cut rate option for schooling. And I'm like, hey, no. So yeah, but it involves a lot of work out of me with the ages of our kids. So anyway, little life update. Now let's move on to the favorites. So um, I have 
a few favorites in makeup. First of all, this one, the Pure and Raw Beauty Christy palette. I got this in right at the end of July, I think is when it finally came in. I love this palette. I think it's amazing. This is a pressed pigment palette. This is not something that is great for beginners or for people who have difficulty with blending or don't want to blend a lot. It does require a good bit of blending because it is pigments and they behave differently than eyeshadows. But I've been wearing this quite a bit and it is beautiful. Now I would say if you can't get your hands on this and you're interested in the neutral side, the Urban Decay Naked Reloaded has shades that are very, very similar in tone. If you weren't able to get your hands on this palette and you have this, because a lot of the shades are similar. And like if you mixed, it just does and move point together, you will get retro. So if you want something similar to this and you have the Naked Reloaded palette, you can kind of get a similar look just because I know obviously you can't get this anymore um, unless you pre-ordered it. And then I definitely haven't been using the colorful side nearly as much just because I typically tend to do more colorful looks when I'm going out. And um, yeah, but I have used Garden State and yes, I did smear all over my eye and it looked gorgeous. These colors are beautiful. They really, really pop. And I just love this palette in general. It can be a bit tricky to work with, but again, pigments versus eyeshadows. Also, these lashes, these are trimmed down because I've worn them a few times and I have small eyelids. This is the 3D Cruelty Free Lux Lashes in Lovely. I love these lashes so much, they are my heart. I need to have 500 pairs of them. Please, Pure, please release more of these lashes. These are gorgeous. I would wear these every single day. They're beautiful, they're lightweight, they don't irritate my eyes. They are probably the most dramatic, lightest lash I've ever worn. Like These are as light as Ardell Wispies easier to apply because they have a thicker band, but they're so dramatic and they don't weigh down your eyes. It's like amazing. Uh, my next favorite is what I'm wearing on my skin today. This is the NYX Bear With Me Tinted Skin Veil. This is in the shade True Beige Buff. I love this product. This is gorgeous. If you want a really nice glowy like, I don't have powder on, so I'm, like, glowing like crazy. I've also been in front of lights all day. This is amazing. I love this so much. Probably one of my favorite NYX skin products ever because, like, I even have a good amount of breakouts going on right now, and it just, it covers them. And you can build it up. It's buildable, so you can get a light to medium coverage out of this. Speaking of, this is filthy because I used it today. My other Real Techniques Beauty Blender, as I was washing it, like, started ripping apart. Yeah, ew. Today. So I pulled this one out of the drawer. This one's actually designed for powder. If you look at it, it is really, really fuzzy. Excuse my Band-Aid. I got, like, a blister on my pinky. I think it's from holding my phone. But it's fuzzy. So this is designed for like applying powder, blushes, things like that. However, I actually really like it for applying lighter foundations because it kind of grabs under the product and really works it into your pores like beautifully. So I really, really like this. If you happen to have one of these round and your regular beauty blender decides to break, this is great, not beauty blender, but Miracle Sponge. Um, this is excellent, excellent, excellent for applying foundation. I will say though that the Real Technique sponges, like the first one I had lasted forever. I've gone through quite a few of these in the past year though because they tear when I wash them. Like they just get rips in them and I don't know why. It doesn't make any sense. I think they change the material just slightly because they rip and like 
My first real technique sponge never ripped and I had a beauty blender that I kept for like nearly two years. Yes, I know gross, but I washed it frequently. And when I threw it away, I cut it open. It was perfectly clean inside, so. Um, but um, I never had the first real technique sponge or a beauty blender ever rip on me like this. So I don't get it. But um, I do like this fuzzy one a lot. All right, next thing, what I'm wearing on my lips. This is probably one of my favorite lip colors. I love the formula and I love the color. This is the NYX Powder Puff Lippy in the shade Squad Goals. These are gorgeous. I actually need to order more of these. Now, I've been like drinking Dr. Pepper because I bought Dr. Pepper because I'm actually making pulled pork right now. If you put Dr. Pepper in your crock pot when you're making pulled pork and then rip it apart and then put your barbecue sauce in. Yeah, Dr. Pepper is like the secret to perfect pulled pork every time it's amazing. So a lot of this is worn off, but I love this slippy. It has a very nice powdery satin finish, but it doesn't dry out your lips and the color is just, it's like gorgeous. I should have reapplied before I started filming, but my lips are very dry right now. But you just get a really nice, like powdery soft finish to it. It wears off really evenly, it wears really well. Um, it looks really nice on camera if you have to do like Zoom meetings or things like that. Anyway, I love this. Uh, let's see, next I have this. I have really been babying my hair lately. Oh yes, my hair is a new color. I added more Girls' Night to it. So I bleached my roots and then put Girls' Night over my whole head. So my roots are lavender again, and then my ends are more of a periwinkle because this is over a mix of faded Poseidon, Blue Jean Baby, and Aquamarine. So if you take a faded bluey green and put um, Girls' Night over it, you'll get a really pretty like periwinkle shade. But I've been babying my hair because I found out I decided to do a porosity test on my hair, like the where you drop your hair in a cup of water and um the bottom of my hair where i'm like oh it always behaves it's so nice it does everything is low porosity all the hair on the top of my head that likes to frizz and look dry and go crazy is high porosity so i've been adding in as many heavier products as possible this is not a heavier product but it is one that i've been using a lot more lately i know this ball has lasted forever this is the innisfree camellia essential hair oil serum camellia oil is excellent for your hair. I found that this works really well on fine hair and doesn't make it look greasy, even if you use quite a bit. My hair drinks this stuff up. It really loves it. It adds a nice shine to it and it helps control the frizz. Now it doesn't control it fully, but what I like to do is put this on and then flat iron and um, this can function as a heat protectant. I'll put this on and then flat iron and it helps my hair look so much better. So I really, really like this. If you're looking for a hair serum that's like mid-weight to lighter, like nothing super heavy, super greasy, definitely give this a shot. I don't know if I will recommend this for super dry hair, but for mid-range hair, this actually works really well, especially if you have fine hair. So I like that a lot. And then a product that I just had, like I ordered this from Target because I was desperate. I didn't want to wait for a Yes Style order, which by the way, Yes Style ships like so freaking fast. Now I got an order from them in six days, which was insane to me. I'm like, I can order stuff from like, Illinois and it will take like two weeks to get to Ohio and you guys can ship from Hong Kong to Ohio like that like I don't get it but this the I picked this up at Target this is the Neutrogena Bright Boost Resurfacing Micro Polish um, this is a physical and chemical exfoliant I 
tried for a while again going back strictly to chemical exfoliants to see if it helped my skin and it didn't at all. I have a skin type that doesn't like to exfoliate even with chemical exfoliants. My skin cells basically like to freaking glue themselves together. I actually have, um, you can probably see, I have keratosis pilaris on the back of my arms and on my legs quite bad. My skin just does not like to shed skin cells. It is helpful to use um, like lotions with lactic acid. It's helpful to use chemical exfoliants, things like that. But for my face in particular, if I don't use an actual physical exfoliant, it doesn't matter how many chemical exfoliants I use unless I use a super duper heavy um, acid peel that I have. If I use that, I'm good. But um, a physical exfoliant like once a week helps my skin so, so much and it helps the texture so, so much. So. Um, I do use this. Now this um, has cellulose in it as the main physical exfoliant, which is what's in a lot of like peeling gels. So this is actually pretty gentle on my skin. I will relate it to Kate Somerville Exfolicate without the burning sensation. Like this doesn't burn your skin at all. It's super gentle. It feels moisturizing too when you're using it. So I actually really like this. And for me, that's high praise because I have not tried a Neutrogena product in like the last five years that I've actually really liked. Like the retinol, I did not like. Their um, makeup wipes burn the crap out of my skin. This though, this I I approve of this. We we can we can we can work with this. We like her. So that is everything for my beauty favorites. Now for books, probably my favorite book I read this month was called. I, Eliza Hamilton, and it's by Susan Holloway Scott. I literally had this written down on my iPad, but it's stretching right now. I, Eliza Hamilton, I got it from my library app. It is so good. It's a historical fiction by Eliza Hamilton, and if you liked Hamilton Musical, and if you didn't, I can't even comprehend that, but um, it's all about Eliza Hamilton and like her whole life story and it's really, really interesting. Well, it doesn't go through her whole life story, it stops, does it? I think it stops at a certain point. I think it stops right after the death of Hamilton, if I remember correctly. I'm not sure, I can't remember, it's been a while. But the book itself was really, really well written. So if you like historical fiction, I would highly recommend that one. For shows, I've definitely been on a historical fiction kick. So I've been watch re-watching The Crown seasons one and two. And I'm actually watching season three with my husband right now. I know it came out in November, but we've just been so busy. We have hadn't gotten around to it. And it's just so good. And I'll tell you one thing, like, Olivia Coleman is doing such a great job as the queen in season three. Like, it's incredible. My heart, though, is still with Claire Foy. I loved her interpretation of young Elizabeth. Like, just, I love Claire Foy with all my freaking heart. She is, like, incredible. But anyway, I've been rewatching that and then just everything historical fiction lately because I think it just takes me out of my head and into someone else's world, which is a great place to be right now. If I'm in my own head too much, I get a little stressed, so sometimes it's nice to just go into someone else's world for a while. Uh, let's see, as far as music in July, I mostly listen to the Hamilton soundtrack, like, a ton, just because it's so good. Like, the songs that are so free freaking good. I listened to that a lot and then um, probably my favorite song of the month and I think this was released, I'm pretty sure this was released in July. Um, Maria by Huasa. Oh my goodness. I freaking love that song so much. So, so much. My middle name is Marie but whenever I was in trouble it was always Maria every single time. If I was in trouble, tell me, did your parents change your name when you were in trouble? Like, my middle name is Marie, but every time it was like, Joanna Maria? 
every single time I was in trouble, my name turned to Maria. I don't know how, but suddenly I was Maria every time I was in trouble. Let me know, did your parents do that? Like your name completely changed when you got in trouble? <laughs> Hi mom, I know you're watching this, but I love that song. It's so, so good. If you haven't listened to it yet, it's like one of those songs that makes you want to like put on your like five inch heels and just go and stomp down the sidewalk like you're on a freaking runway. That's, that's the kind of song it is. It's so good. All right, you guys, I think that is everything for my July favorites. I know it wasn't a lot, but apparently I rambled a lot because I've been filming for like 24 minutes already. Anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you so much for listening to my rambling about everything, my mini life update, about me way overloading my schedule and all of my July favorites. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. It really helps support my channel. And if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I post a few times a week, mostly about makeup and beauty and stuff, but sometimes we do other things like I'll do nails or we'll study Korean together or very rarely I will film a vlog, usually when I'm like, actually doing things and we haven't like done anything for like six months except sitting now so that might be a while before next vlog but you know but anyway make sure to subscribe you guys can also keep up with me on twitter instagram and facebook twitter and instagram are the best places to follow me because that's where I hang out the most. Basically, I'm hardly ever on Facebook. It's mostly Twitter and Instagram. So go ahead and follow me there. And thank you guys so, so much for watching. I'm so happy to have you here. Hi to all my new subscribers. I'm so happy to have you here. I'm happy that you enjoy this channel and I will see you guys again very, very soon. Bye.